Thank you very much for coming. Nuruz, a happy new year to you, and Salam Ashraf. Very good, Prime Minister. Much welcome. It echoes what your ministers, especially in our house, have began saying about the brutality of the regime in Tehran. But I have the same question for you. What action will follow those words? Government ministers have repeatedly expressed concern at the brutal assault of defenseless Iranian refugees at Camp Ashraf. But where's the action? More than 200 loudspeakers have been positioned around the perimeter of that camp, pumping out death threats and abuse to those refugees night and day around the clock. Thank you, UK government, for expressing your concern about this. Thank you, UK government, for making representations to the government of Iraq about this. And thank you to the United Nations Assistance Mission in, in Iraq for doing the same. But it goes on, and it gets worse, because it started with far fewer loudspeakers, and I assume because nobody said anything, nobody did anything, they, said, they issued warm words that they thought they would step up what is psychological torture. There's no other description for it. Where's the action? I've contacted Mr. Ad Mellet, the UNAMI head, asking urgently for him to seek permission from the UN Security Council to re-establish a monitoring force around Camp Ashraf and as part of that to insist upon the dismantling of these weapons of psychological torture, let alone the denial of proper medical treatment to, to the Iranian dissidents inside Ashraf who need it and the interruption of essential supplies. Action is what those millions in Iran who cry freedom now demand. And don't think that the opposition in Iran has gone away. It hasn't. Because on uh, February the 7th and 14th, there were big demonstrations in 70 parts of Tehran alone, with demonstrators again shouting, down with the dictator, down with theocratic rule. And this is the link to Ashraf because these are the slogans of the Iranian resistance. And they go across the desert from Iraq into the towns and cities of Iran and are picked up there by those demanding the freedom, democracy, and the rule of law, which Cameron said, Prime Minister Cameron, was the right of everyone living in that region. The government, it is so important, the Prime Minister in Kuwait, that the support that those who cry freedom in Iran demand and deserve is one which we support. We could never get the last government to call for regime change in Iran. And perversely, when he was Foreign Secretary, Jack Straw ruled it out. I mean, what an enormous help that is. You know, you're trying to persuade the Iranians to uh, abide by the undertakings they've given to the UN over their nuclear weapons development program, and you let them off the hook in that way. But now, the genie's out of this bottle. And if a call for regime change in Libya, in Tunisia, in Egypt, is good enough. Don't stop there. Go round the corner. Because these winds, these gales of democratic change, know no borders. And the demand for democracy and freedom in Iran is as strong there as it is in these other countries along the North African coast. So I plead with my this government now to make clear this is an end of appeasement 
This is an end of efforts to try to persuade the mullahs to behave like human beings and come into the modern world. This is now the time to say to them, we, you have been there too long. The brutality which you use against your people must stop. We've said all this to Gaddafi. Why doesn't it being, being said to those in power in Tehran? Exactly the same thing. In the month of January alone, the month of January alone in Iran, 91 people were executed. 91 in 30 days. Iran hangs more men, women and children than the whole of the rest of the world put together. It, it, this is staggering brutality. So I, I really do believe that there is, there is new hope now for those brave people in Ashraf and for those of their brothers and sisters uh, in Iran itself. That we are on the cusp, on the brink of change and our government has a responsibility to try to help that along, not to interfere, because we're not interfering around the rest of the Middle East, but we do have a responsibility to make clear we stand with you, as I know that all of you here this afternoon also stand with them, and I thank you very much indeed for coming. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you may remember that uh, some years ago I went to Paris and the Mad Muller's Secret Service set out for me in a letter all the people that I had met in Paris. I sent them a letter back saying, get stuffed. <laughs> uh, and I've never heard another word from them uh, uh, again. And I just think there are a bunch, in this mother of parliaments, there are a bunch of playground bullies, and they ought to be treated like that. Except for the brave people of Iran, these guys are not playground bullies. They murder and torture people. They're ghastly, ghastly people, and they ought to be treated as such. I had always rather hoped that having sort of seen them off. We had seen them off forever. But my understanding is recently, and Robin, you know this, that um, they have been starting again to try and fill us up, members of Parliament, members of the House of Lords, with a set of lies about what the administration is doing in Iran. And they are just telling lie after lie after lie. What we have got to do is ensure that we just tell them once again, get stuffed, we don't believe a single word of what you're telling us. Now, here we start at the beginning of uh, Novros. And what I want to do on behalf of those parliamentarians in the United Kingdom is to send the message to those people in Camp Ashraf, who uh, Robin has quite rightly said have been suffering all manner of deprivation and all manner of psychological warfare, that we stand behind them four square and we will not stop until they are relieved of the murderous intent that lies behind every effort being made against them and if nothing else i hope here at this time of novelist we will explain to them that we are there and that what will happen to them we will be behind them thank you very much indeed thank you. this is now rose Nauru's new day, and I believe that it symbolizes a new day which is dawning. The uh, people of Iran have now made known their views about this. They want a change. The terror on the streets has not been able to prevent it, and uh, the world is looking on Iran with different eyes. There was a time when my colleagues have, have said the West in particular wanted to cozy up to the government of Iran. That's changed. The world now sees the uh, government of uh, Iran as pariahs. There have been more condemnations of the present government of the mullahs 
by instruments of the United Nations than I believe any other state in the history of the United Nations. But at this present time, here in March 2011, the new year is not a very happy time for those people in Ashraf. They are being subjected to mental torture, physical torture in the denial of medical facilities, but that incessant barrage of propaganda that deprives them of sleep, the thought process, and the agony of the continuous noise is a disgrace and it's an inhumanitarian act that this world should rise up and speak out against. We're doing our best here in this parliament to do what we can to keep that message alive. So this new year, we, say, we send a message, not just to our inspirational leader, Madam Rajavi, but to those people suffering in Ashraf and of course in Iran itself. Our message is that our voice is loud and we will continue to use it until all of you enjoy the freedom that here in Britain we take for granted. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, firstly, it is always a joy to be here, but I just want to take one or two moments just for, to reflect in a happy time on uh, what is going on in Ashraf now. Just reflect for a moment if you live in Ashraf city, in a great civilization in that bit of desert in Iraq. You live with the shadow of the Iraqi forces backed up by the Iranian regime. You live under that shadow 24 hours every day. Every day of every week of every month of every year. And that must be a harrowing experience. The denial of medical treatment, the denial of uh, goods that we all rely on in our everyday lives, the inability of residents to access the camp to see relatives. Basic, basic, core human rights, let alone the violence of the attacks which have been perpetrated against those three and a half, Iran a half thousand Iranian people. So I want the message to go out from today, and we've said this before, to repeat that message, that at this time of New Year, to those three and a half thousand brave people in Ashraf City, that we are with you, that there are parliamentarians, Iranian exiles, and millions of people within Iran who are with you and understand the pressures and look forward to the very quick, speedy occasion when those human rights can be afforded to you as well. And again, to reiterate to our friends in Ashraf, in Tehran and elsewhere, that this is a huge movement. It is growing strength. They know that from the streets of Tehran. They know that from the demonstrations in the universities. But you have a huge amount of support throughout the world. And it's up to us as parliamentarians here in this place and throughout other countries to ensure that liberation of Tehran does come, will happen, and we salute you in your efforts.